Hello, <laughs> it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me today. So who and what inspired you in your earliest days as an artist? I probably started writing music in my early to mid teens. I would say I was probably inspired at the time by kind of love and unrequited love. In my teens and twenties, I, I wrote more love songs and in my thirties, I've written more songs that maybe tell a story and kind of inspired by, you know, other aspects of, 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 of life really generally, so. Mm. And that kind of inspired the sound that you wanted to create? Well, I mean, when I was 14, 15, I wasn't hugely thinking about about sound, I guess. It was, you know, the early the early days of exploring kind of writing melody and, and, and writing words and understanding, I guess, how songs fit together versus choruses, that kind of thing. The sound thing, I, I, I think that came much later um, as as my songwriting had reached a point where I guess the songs were good enough to be played to audiences. Um, sure. um, yeah, now now that's obviously just as important as an aspect as the as the as the songs themselves. But really, the 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 crux of it is, I guess, if you've got a good song, then hopefully you can, you know, there are many ways that you can dress it and make it sound good. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Um, and what continues to inspire you today? Yeah, so I so. Um, Kind of as I said, as I got older, I've written quite a lot of songs in, inspired by family members, family stories. Um, you know, it, it everything and anything. So it's not that I, I don't write love songs anymore, but um, uh, yeah, I, I've written a couple of songs inspired by my grandmother, who I lost at the age of ninety nine. She was uh, amazing, and there were kind of stories throughout her life that I mean, I could probably write a whole album based on on, on stories that she told me. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more that kind of thing. Growing older, um, uh, settling down, having, I've got two small step kids, so kind of parenting, um, you know, all, all of those things really now, so. Oh, lovely. Um, and uh, so I, what I did want to ask, um, it wasn't on the um, the questions that I sent over, but I was really interested in what kind of guides your songwriting process, um, rather than necessarily the sound that you're creating, but your actual process of writing. You know, writing. Yeah. yeah. So I've kind of got a, a list of, you know, somewhere on my computer, a list of kind of themes, ideas, songs that I, I want to write in the future. And it might be something that I'm like, oh, I've got this idea and I sit down and I start working on it straight away. It might be something that just sits there. And then at some point I sit down and I think, oh, I'm going to try and write today. What? And I go back and have a look at the thing and what, you know, on that list, there might be something that that particular day inspires me. But I generally sit down at the keyboard and, or, or, or with my guitar, but more, more recently, uh, the keyboard or the piano and, just kind of play around really and and see what comes out and it might be that a lyric hook comes out um that i then work a melody around it might be that i kind of find a little melody pattern on the piano and I'm like oh that's nice and then try and fit some words to that um generally when i'm writing alone i kind of build the song up gradually um i've written quite um extensively with a, a collaborator called stefano della casa and we've written together quite often the two of us will write the music and then i'll take the music away and write the lyrics but when i'm writing myself it, they the two kind of generally come together um and and then yeah so maybe i'll have a you know a, a verse melody with kind of half the lyrics and then i'll then I've got the melody and then I go away and write the other words, but the two the two do kind of come a little bit side by side. It's kind of difficult to predict what's going to come first sometimes, but generally it's the concept that I start with. Okay, okay. well, that's brilliant. Um, and leading on to your latest EP, Ancient Lights, which is phenomenal, um, it highlights uh, your effortless manipulation of powerful mel melodies and your ability to write hard-hitting and thought-provoking lyrics. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the CP and the narrative behind it? Yeah, so um, Ancient Lights is actually a collection of older songs, kind of songs that I wrote, um, it, yeah, in my, well, I think there's one on there that I wrote when I was maybe 19, but in my 20s, early, twen early to mid 20s, I would say. And they were songs that probably were recorded kind of back in the day. And I 
uh, you know, as as kind of my career progressed and, you know, my recordings and my writing improved, um, you know, there were kind of recordings that weren't really available in the, in the public sphere. And when we went into lockdown, I started to stream and I did quite a lot of live streaming on Facebook and on Instagram. And I didn't want to kind of be repeating myself and playing the same songs all the time. So I kind of went back into my back catalogue and had a look at the, you know, my old list of songs and thought to myself, is there anything in here that kind of, you know, might be worth revisiting? And I played a few of these songs kind of during the streams and it was just, it was it was nice for me personally to kind of practice those songs up again and, you know, um, kind of go back in time a little bit. And, and, you know, the response was really positive. And I thought to myself, maybe these songs do actually deserve a second chance at being heard. And the EP title is actually, um, uh, is, is named after the house that I grew up in, um, which was a, a beautiful old um, uh, timber building. And my dad kind of named it because um, it was it's the, the windows were lead, lead lighted. So, you know, that kind of crisscross pattern you get in those old buildings. Um, and, and my mum did the artwork for the EP cover, which is the, the window design, basically. Um, and yeah, it, it, I just, I just, yeah, I got to, I just felt like it was a time to kind of give those those songs a chance at, you know, life, life once again, chance of being heard, so. Absolutely, that's amazing. And like I said, it's a beautiful album um, and we can't wait to hear some of the songs live here. Thank you. Um, so in terms of other kind of key points in your career, um, from supporting Seth Lakeman to appearing on Radio 2 and participating in the highly competitive art artist mentoring program. Um, you've already seen some incredible highlights in your career so far. Um, what are you looking forward to most this coming year? What can we expect? So I've just started working with Ant Miles as my new agent, who you, you guys obviously yes, know. You. <laughs> uh, I met I met Ant uh, at Manchester Folk Festival last year, which was the very beginning of English Folk Expo's Arts Mentoring Program. Um, and um, I'd already come across his agency. We met, and he said, "Oh, you know, I've got a, a couple of." things going on in Bristol and obviously um, Rising Folk at St George's is one of those um, but I played earlier in the summer I opened for Bella Hardy at Down End um, in June and he'd already been really kind of positive about my writing and um, uh, you know the sound of my recording material and, and yeah he, he, he was just he was just kind of lovely when I came off stage and asked if I'd be interested in working with him and I said yeah I really I really would actually because I you know come across him and seen the work that he was doing and so that that's kind of just starting and I'm really looking forward to you know to, to to working with Ant um and seeing kind of how that can kind of grow my audiences and my career and um and yeah the other thing is is kind of towards the end of the year I'm getting into the going into the studio to record my what will be my third studio album the songs are written um and yeah one or two of those will probably be played uh, uh next week this week this week no next week it's next week is it next week. Friday <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I said I've already been working this morning sorry break, break, oh break. no 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 same don't worry <laughs> Friday, the 13th. Friday the 13th isn't it so um and uh yeah so I'm really looking forward to to kind of bringing those songs to to life in the studio as well um and yeah um just just kind of continuing to to build and play live and and you know do the things that I love doing um alongside alongside the teaching that I also do so that's brilliant it's so exciting as well that you're going to be releasing again soon yeah um, towards next year I hope the album will be released so that's the plan oh well, I can't wait um so we also cannot wait obviously for you playing next week here um what can our audiences expect yeah so as a kind of said with the with the writing um i also perform on keys and guitar um i'm so i'll be playing solo um so um yeah kind of a mixture of keys based songs and guitar based songs um uh at pretty much every show i've played recently someone's come up to me and told me that i've made them cry so maybe a few tears in the audience um it's always you know, always my, response, my response is always i'm, I'm really sorry but actually I'm, I'm not really sorry because ultimately my aim is to you know to to move and provoke thought and if i you know if someone's cried then 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 I, my job is done right That's so <laughs> uh, so maybe maybe some tears um and uh yeah, I, I I write I write music um, that I you know I kind of take the 
mick out of myself a little bit and so you know a load of depressing songs but i like to feel that you know i'm tackling subjects and talking about subjects that that might be objectively sad but maybe there's a you know a positive message or something kind of uplifting about you know people people do say it's thought provoking and uplifting rather than depressing i mean i did write a really 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 sad song um this summer and i played it to my partner and she said to me oh you know <laughs> You know, kind of, what do you, do you not think that one really is a bit too sad? And I was like, hey, come on, Tom York never had to deal with this stuff. You know, <laughs> this is what I do. Like, you know, <laughs> this is what I do. Like, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing. And you know, if people want to join and, and follow what I'm doing, then that, that's amazing. So, well, that's brilliant. Um, okay, so the the big one. <laughs> if you could choose one desert island track which track would it be and why um so i would actually choose a piece of classical music um and it would be uh rachmaninoff um rhapsody on a theme of paganini which i absolutely adore and if i could only ever listen to one piece of music for the rest of my life i don't think i would ever get bored of it whereas i think if i took a song probably eventually i'd be like oh God, i want to listen to something else now but that i could listen to on repeat forever so <laughs> That would be my that's choice. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, thank you so much. It's lovely meeting you. And yeah, yeah thank, thank you so much for taking yeah. I can't wait No, for thank you. Thanks for asking me to do it. <laughs>